Hello and welcome to Agile Tech Channel. My name is Christian Drieling, I'm Senior Systems Engineer at Agile Technology, and in this video I want to show you how to do the first steps with thin clients in our Universal Management Suite. What are we going to see in this video? First we will create a folder structure for our new thin clients, then we will register a thin client to the Universal Management Suite, and in the last step I will show you how to work with a thin client in the folder structure. To start with our management server and with thin clients, the best way is to think a little bit about your structure, how you want to manage your devices. So the first step that I regularly do is creating folders in the thin client section. We can just do it with right click on thin clients and saying new directory. The first directory that I will create is uh, a directory for the operating system type. This is always a good way to start with it, because if we have a top folder for all our Linux devices, then we can roll out configuration for all Linux devices. If we are directly starting with departments, for example, then we have to assign profiles to every department, even if they are for all our devices. I will start with Linux here, because in our tutorials we will only work with Linux devices. After I've done this, I mostly start creating a structure uh, based on the company organization units or if you have an Active Directory, for example, you also can take a look to the structure in your Active Directory to start with the structure here. My first step will be creating a folder for my business unit IGEL technology and then I will separate it uh, into different regions. For example, we have Germany and another country is, for example, Spain. And so this is interesting mostly if you have a lot of uh, branch offices in different countries because you can do the language settings, for example, based on the, on the countries. In Germany, IGEL has several offices, so the headquarter is located in Bremen. Uh, we have our research and development based in Augsburg. And of course, we also have an office in Mainz. And now I have separated it by my branch offices because in many cases I have different IP address settings, for example, for different offices and stuff like this. And to go a step more, I can say, okay, in Bremen we have the pre-sales department, we have, for example, also our human resources department here, and maybe we also have a sales department, things like this. So you can create a folder structure like you need it for your use cases. Maybe sometimes it's more intelligent to do it on a technical level. Sometimes it's your organigram from your company. Or, as I said, you can also take a look to the structure of your Active Directory, for example. After we created the folder structure in our thin client section, we want to start with our first thin client. So, what I can do here is I can click on this little symbol and this is a function for scanning for new thin clients. In the most cases, especially for the testing and uh, tutorial way here, we can just scan all, all of our local network and then we will have an overview about all our thin clients. We also can specify an IP range here or lists of IP ranges, but for this here, for the first steps, it's okay to scan the local network. Now our UMS server is sending a broadcast in the local network and trying to find some thin clients. And here I prepared the virtual machine from the last video, where it has at the moment no certificate. This is an interesting information. Certificate has nothing to do with the license. Certificate means if the thin client is registered the first time through the UMS, we will send the public key of the UMS server to the thin client. Then the thin client is only allowed to talk to this server. No other server in your network could manage this device. We will get some information about the client here, the MAC address, the host name, the IP address, and also which product it is. To start, importing the thin client, we can just check the box include. 
At this moment we could decide to put it in a special folder, but we would just want to start from scratch and I say OK. Now the public key is transferred to the thin client and if I rescan my network now, you will see that in the list of thin clients, my thin client I've just added has already a certificate installed to the thin client. And no, uh, and now no other thin uh, UMS server can add this client to his database. It's only manageable by this universal management suite. After adding the thin client to the universal management suite, we get a few information about the client. That's the same information we have already seen in the scanning process. If we want to have some more information, we can wait for one reboot, then the agent is doing the inventory on the client, but we want to do it a little bit faster. So we right click the client, say other thin client commands and refresh system information. Now the server is requesting some new information from the client, the agent is doing the inventory. And if I just press F5, I will get a lot of more information about the processor. This is of course the processor of my laptop here because we're running it in a virtual machine. I get some information about the memory, about the graphic chipset and all this stuff. And this is also something we can work later with it. We can create views and stuff like this. More interesting at the moment is that we can specify some more information. So we have some free text fails, for example, the common field. Here I can say, okay, it's virtual thin client for testing. And if I later go back to the thin client, I'm not sure what it is. I can just take a look to the comment section and I see, okay, it's a virtual thin client. Also interesting for many customers is to set an asset ID. So if you have an asset management database somewhere uh, and your devices are labeled with tags and stuff like this, you can add the asset ID here and use it later for some requests to the database and stuff like this. On the right side here, we see the assigned configuration objects or files we wanted to transfer to the thin client. At the moment, we didn't do anything to the thin client, so everything is empty. In the top field, we will see the directly assigned profiles. And in the bottom field here, we will see what is assigned through a folder in top of the thin client. If we right click a thin client, you will see that we have uh, some functions here. For example, we can rename the thin client, we can delete it. And also we have some functions for the operating system of the thin client, shadowing the thin client, shutting it down, waking it up, uh, rebooting it doing firmware updates. And here we have the possibility to send messages, reset it to factory defaults, all the stuff. All these actions we have here on the thin client, we of course also provide on folders. So for example, if we go with right click on IGEL technology, you will see we have the same commands here. That means if you press reboot on IGEL technology, all clients in the folders and the subfolders will get the request for reboot. That's important to know. So at the moment, if I close down the structure here, you see our thin client is just in thin clients, no subfolder. To move a thin client in a subfolder, it's easy. You can just drag and drop it and put it somewhere here. Now our setup is asking you when to do changes if there are changes to the system. You have the possibility to say, okay, do it in the next reboot, then no information will be sent to the client. The client will be asking for new configurations in the next reboot. If you say now, all clients that are affected by this will get the information, there's a new configuration, and then there will be a pop-up for the user. So you should only do this in urgent cases or in testing scenarios. In the most cases, it's okay to say, do it in the next reboot. Now you see our thin client is located in thin clients, LX, Agile Technology, Germany but uh, maybe we want to put it somewhere else. And I think this is a pre-sale thin client. And now you see the thin client is here in the structure just by dragging and dropping. We also could move folders by this way and all this stuff really easy to do 
all the moving things. So now you have an overview about how to create a folder structure in the Universal Management Suite, how to add a thin client to the UMS and how to move it into the folder structure that you want to. Thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to write us a mail, to give us a call, whatever. We have a great preset support waiting for your questions. And also we have an IGIL eDocs, all information you need for getting started with our management server and the thin clients. Thanks.